A fan trellis is a great feature you can add to any garden, but these are especially helpful for those climbing plants. This way you can allow them to grow in a controlled fashion. The only downside is these are about $50 or more if you buy them at your local store. But I'm going to show you how to build one of these for about $5. Let's do this. Now one of the best woods for this project is cedar. That's because it's rot resistant and should last a long time out in the weather. But cedar by itself can be quite expensive. That is, unless you know the hack. And the hack is to look for cedar fence pickets. These are about six feet tall, about five and a half inches wide, and I can pick these up at my store for about four dollars. When you're picking these up, I strongly suggest to rummage through as many as you can in the pile and find the ones with very few knots. I guarantee you there will be a bunch of them with a lot of big knots. Avoid those. Now once you get your pickets home, you want to take them over to the table saw. We want to rip these down into a 7 8 of an inch strip. We actually want to create five of those. And the reason why we're doing 7 8 of an inch is because the saw blade is going to take away about an eighth of an inch when you make the cut. We want to make sure we get at least five of the 7 8 inch pieces and then you should have about a half inch left over. And once you get those first five pieces cut out, that half inch piece that's left over we're going to take it over to the miter saw and we're going to cut it into a three foot two foot and a one foot section now we want to take those five pieces we cut and we want to turn them all up on the edge and then squish them all together then we want to take a straight edge and make them all nice and even with each other about like so and then up here about six inches we want to make a reference mark now we need to add some glue in between each of these. We need to make sure that it is type 3 glue and waterproof, and we do not want to go past our reference mark. And as I'm putting these together, I'm putting a little piece of a craft stick in between each to keep the glue squeezed out from going up too far. Doesn't have to be exact, we're just trying to get them pretty close. Then I'm adding some clamps on the end to clamp this all together to make sure the glue gets fully adhered. Then you can just wipe away any of the glue squeeze out. And with the spacers in place, you'll see that the wood is already starting to spread apart. It's now time to spread out the fan and to attach that three foot, two foot, and one foot section that we cut earlier. Now, depending on the flexibility of your wood and just the way everything goes together, these numbers I'm about to give you might vary just a little bit. Now, going down the center rail, the three foot piece is going to sit about six to seven inches down from the top. The two foot section is going to fit about 21 to 22 inches down and the one foot section is going to be 43 to 44 inches down. Now I've marked the center of the three foot board to make sure we have everything centered up and I've also marked the ends out here where the boards should come across the farthest out fan pieces. Now this is usually somewhere between four and a half to five inches so I've marked four and three quarter. Now to attach these together I'm going to again use some number three glue and a brad nailer to hold everything in position. If by chance you don't have a brad nailer that's okay. You can use some small nails or some small screws or if you have a bunch of clamps those can come in handy as well. Once we have the first one in place, we want to work quick so we can get done before that glue starts to dry. We want to stretch out both of these pieces to the respectful marks that we've put on the ends here. Now, don't be surprised if there's a little bit of cracking going on. Once you get it there, you want to eyeball this to get this as even as possible. Then hold one of the ends. And we want to then do a reference mark so we know exactly where to put it. Once you get these outer pieces in place, then you want to stretch out the middle ones to about the center and attach them there as well. And to make sure the glue drives correctly, I added some clamps. And for the second board, we've lined it up with the mark and we're measuring both sides to make sure it's even. And for the second piece, we added some glue and we're just going to use some brad nails to hold it in place. And we just repeated the process for the third one. Now moving back down to the bottom, we're going to pre-drill some holes and add some two and a half inch screws from both sides just to make sure the glue doesn't separate. And if they haven't fallen out already, you can go in real carefully and get out those little spacers. Now, if by chance you have any large cracks form, like I had one start to crack right here, what I did is I added just a little bit more glue right here in between the two pieces and I'm clamping it together and I'm going to give it some more time to dry. Now even though we're using cedar here, which is rot resistant, we still want to protect the end grain. So I'm going to take some number three waterproof glue and we're going to put that on the end grain down here and let it fully cure before we actually set it on the ground. And that should minimize any water trying to seep up into the wood. 
Now, if you're gonna bury this, I'd probably suggest doing that on the sides as well. But if you're not gonna bury it, I wouldn't do that because it probably will discolor it. And there you have it, an awesome looking fan trellis. We have about $5 of material and about an hour's worth of time if you follow the process I showed you. Now, if by chance you wanna make a lot of these, you could probably make a jig to be able to put all of the pieces exactly in alignment to attach everything a lot quicker. You could probably build one of these in about 30 minutes. Now. Five dollars in material, 30 minutes in time. If you take these out to craft fairs, you'll see these for as much as $50. So I'd put it a little bit less, probably about $40. We're talking $35 an hour. That's if you don't have a jig. If you have a jig, that's $70 an hour you could be making by building these and selling them. That's a great profit. Otherwise, family and friends would love these, especially if you have a gardener in your household or in your family. They would just absolutely love to have one of these. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project, so get out in your shop and have fun building.